Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Intentionally Nala. Love, peace, and blessings to you all. As usual, I have my notes here. Today's message will be coming from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52, but we will be focusing on verses 51 through 52. When we call on the name of Jesus, we are desiring help. Why do we even call on him? Because we know something. We know that it's not a regular name to call in vain. When we call on Jesus, I think we automatically subconsciously align the significance of that name with an answered prayer. Like when we think about Jesus and when anybody calls on his name, nine, 99, nine, <laughs> nine times out of 10 or 99% of the time, we are associating with that name of help. Jesus or Jesus Christ, like we need help in this situation. Like that's what people are usually thinking. That is their emotions behind calling his name. So a lot of people, even if they're, you know, not Christian or even if they don't believe in Christ, that name is known to have that power to um, be an answer to prayer. So in Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52, there's a story of a blind man that when he heard about Jesus coming around, he started yelling his name to get his attention. Because he was blind, he wasn't sure exactly where to pinpoint Jesus, so he started yelling his name even louder um, to get his attention, so loud that the other people around him was telling him to be quiet. In the, in the Bible, it says that they were telling this man to hold his peace, and he did not. Matter of fact, when he got louder, um, well, when they was telling him to be quiet, he got even louder. So Jesus heard him and Jesus commanded that the blind man be brought to him. And so the question that Jesus asked the blind man is quite profound to me. There was no greeting or anything. What Jesus says is, what is your will that I should do for you? Basically saying, what can I do for you? What is your desire that you want for me? What is it that you want me to do for you? And so it's very profound to me because the man was screaming Jesus's name to the point where people were telling him to be quiet. Jesus knew that the blind man needed something from him. And so, you know, to be screaming like that, he needed something from him. So the man says, the man asks to receive his sight, you know, he's blind. And so Jesus says, go about your way. Your faith has made you whole. This very short encounter is very comprehensive to me because when the blind man was yelling Jesus's name, that already was his faith. You know, when he, him being blind, he can't see anything, but he just heard about Jesus being around in the vicinity. The fact that he called out his name without even seeing him, the word doesn't say that the blind man heard him. Well, he didn't hear Jesus's voice audibly. He heard, speculated that Jesus was around. And so he called out his name in faith, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And so the fact that if you think about it, the fact that he even called out Jesus's name, even when he can't visually see him was an act of faith. And so the, the short encounter is, is comprehensive to me because basically it was that easy for a miracle. It was that simple for a blessing. You call out to Jesus for help. Jesus asks you, what can I do for you? And you make your request like the man did. I wish to receive my sight. And Jesus didn't even say, yes, your, your wish is granted like a genie in a bottle. It was go about your way keep like keep going keep living your life you know keep going your way your faith your faith in me the fact that you believe that i can do this for you has made you whole you just off that your sight is received and so it was and i think that is amazing it was just that simple the exchange was just so um short and um like valid it, it was just strong and so it's profound because the blind man could not see the glory of the son of David he was not visually aware of his presence and that in itself is the epitome of faith because it's belief in something that we cannot visually see 
but we can reconstruct our minds. We have to believe that he is. We have to believe that he can and he will and that he's willing. All the man did was call on Jesus and ask to have mercy on him. He did not need any evidence that Jesus could heal him because he didn't have any evidence. He couldn't see. He simply believed that he could and that was all that it took for him to receive what he asked for. Believing is transforming your mind to accept what is deemed impossible. I'm going to read that again. Believing is transforming your mind to accept what is deemed impossible. Jesus asked the man, what could he do for the blind man? What, whatever the blind man would have said, that's what he would have received. Whatever he would have received, he would have received that because that is what he believed he would have received revelation that Jesus is the Christ is a gift from God so if you pray to God for something but don't believe you will receive it if you don't believe if you pray if you make a prayer and then you don't believe that it'll happen like oh I wish I pray I get this job but you don't believe that you really could get the job then you're not going to get the job so if you don't believe it then you will not receive it God has the power. Your words and your thoughts have power and have the ability to affect your reality, which is a gift that God gives us, being in the form of his likeness when he made us in his image. So it does hold true. Being the great I am makes him what he is, which is powerful. He is, therefore he is. And it's the same concept in Mark chapter 10, verses 51 and 52. The blind man believed Jesus was the son of the great I am. And verse 52, thy faith has made thee whole because the blind man acknowledged and believed it's recognizing what is the truth. And because he recognized a certain truth, his belief that he could receive his sight was made a truth. God is only truth because he is righteous, just, and only good. You cannot believe in something false and expect an impactful outcome out of that. Understand this concept. Because the blind man who could not see with his eyes believed with his mind, his creative center, his battlefield of his reality, he believed in the factual principle that Jesus was the son of God, the offspring of the great I am our universal creator. He believed in Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the light. It wasn't an opinion to him. It was valid. It was accurate that Jesus is the son of God. The blind man believed that. His request of receiving his sight was made valid. It was made a truth. And it's made a truth because it's real now. He received his sight. It's a truth. It was legitimate. His request was granted because he was in alignment energetically, actually. His belief in the truthfulness of who Jesus was put him in alignment to receive or to make his request fulfilled. Our belief system controls the battlefield of our mind. There is a constant war in our minds. That is how we became a fallen creation in the beginning because Satan led Eve to believe that she lacked something. So if we reverse that and believe a singular truth of who Jesus is, and the scripture clearly shows that he is more than willing to do for us, then we believe that truth that he is, and we can receive what we are asking for. Mark chapter 9 verse 23 says, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. So if you can believe, that means it's really on you because God already is the great I am. Whether you believe it or not, doesn't make it any less true. God is our Lord and is our creator. And that is a fact. Jesus is the son of God. That is a fact. Just because you don't believe doesn't make it a myth or a legend or an opinion. It just makes you ignorant that you are not in the know just because you don't believe that God is not the Lord and the one and only true God, just because you do not believe that doesn't make an opinion, doesn't make it not a fact. It just makes, that just means that you do not know. It just means that you are in the dark. Just because you don't know what one plus one 
doesn't make it not two. It's always going to be two. If you don't know, then you're ignorant to the fact that the truth that one plus one is two. It doesn't change that. So once you believe, accept a truth, all things are possible to the ones that believe. Renew and transform your mind to the infallible truth. Align your mind and spirit to the truth of God and who his son Jesus Christ is. All right, guys, I'll talk to you next time and love, peace and blessings.